Hello, Raji Reddy, how are you? I'm good, Eric, all fine, thank you. Good. Please introduce yourself and um, tell us where you're telling from, tell us a little bit about your work and, and please tell us a story. Yes. Hello, good evening, everybody. Yes, I'm Raj Lakshmi and I'm calling, for, I, I am from Bangalore. I have started storytelling just a few months back and I'm sure in the field. I thank Eric for having given me this opportunity. I particularly chose David Copperfield because I remember having studied in high school one chapter. And I said, this is an opportunity for me to read a little more about the world famous novel written by Charles Dickens. This was published in 1950 and the story is David Copperfield. Well, the first line of the book, Charles Dickens write, writes, whether I shall turn out to be the hero of my own life or whether that station will be held by anybody else, these pages must show. This is what Charles Dickens write. And it is said, this is an autobiographical novel. He's written his own story, his own feelings, his own thoughts in a format of a novel and it's called David Copperfield. The story begins like this. David is a posthumous child who is born after his father's death six months later. He's never, he's never seen his father, but he has a mo mother and a nurse called Peggotty who loves him. He's nursed so well that he's never feel the absence of his dad. After some time, he knows that something's gonna happen. He starts feeling as a little baby and as he grows up, when he is a little old, he's able to walk, started going to school. One fine evening, there's a tall gentleman who comes home, is Mr. Murdstone. So he, he keeps coming home frequently, talks to his mom very lovingly, looks at her very lovingly, and then he feels that something's gonna happen. Then David says, one fine day, he touches his mom and he feels sad about it. So he knows, he knows now, he's going to come home every day evening on a horse, he rides a horse and comes home and then stays here for some time, goes back every day and his mother is well dressed, well dressed and waiting for him. So as this happens, Piggotty, his nurse becomes very close to him. He's, she's almost like a mother to him. She lo loves him as much as a mother does, nurses him very well. And there's a lot of care and affection from his nurse as well. David remembers as one of his, David remembers these, and it's, he's the first person. He himself tells the story in the novel. He himself speaks, David himself speaks. After some time, he really starts going to school. And as he starts going to school, he's one of the good child, good a child who is learning lessons perfectly as any other child. One day, Mr. Merson calls David and said, David, come on, let recite the poem. And the boy is so scared looking at Mr. Merson. He's huge, crude, rude, shouts at him. Then, what is this? Is this why you go to school? Is this what you're learning? Then mother comes on his behalf. She says, he's the baby. Let him learn, give him a chance. He will do well. But Mr. Murdson is very rude. He says, is this what you're teaching him? Clara, how is this? Where does this boy go? What is happening? Meanwhile, he's so scared. He's so scared. He doesn't open his mouth. Not that he doesn't know to recite a poem. But the fear in him is so bad when he looks at him that he cannot utter a word. He just stays mum. At the same time, Mr. Merson loses his temper and he hits him hard, beats him black and blue and says, this is what's gonna happen. For long, the next day, same thing. When he and his mother is lessons, Mr. Merson comes and hurts him. David could not take this any longer. He bites his hand, Mr. Merson's hand with his teeth, bites very strong. And then Mr. Merson loses his temper, hits him again black and blue and then brings him to a room upstairs of the house on the first floor, puts him in a dark room. He cannot go out. He's just given bread and milk every day. 
and he's asked to come down for the daily prayers just for half an hour and is locked up there. When all these things happening, the little boy is so scared. He didn't know what to do then. I love, I, I did enjoy reading this, this particular incident from the book, David Copperfield. Here, Charles Dickens says, he writes beautifully here. He says, when he was locked up in a dark room where there was no light and for five days at the end of the fifth day, his nurse, Miss Peggotty, Miss Peggotty comes. He hears a voice, TV, TV. He was called at home. TV, I can hear somebody calling me. He looks around here and there. Then he couldn't hear anything. Finally, when he pays attention, he hears there is the tiny sweet little voice, TV, TV, coming from a tiny hollow hole from the door. That's a keyhole. He goes very close to the keyhole and then speaks out. Miss Peggotty, is it you? Is it you? Yes, TV, it's me. It's TV, it's me. Then he gives, he turns his face, puts his ears and listens. And then he puts his mouth across the keyhole and says, Miss Peggotty, what's up for me? What's up for me? Then Peggotty turns again, says, you are going to a boarding school. Boarding school? He has a mixed feeling. He doesn't know what to do. He has a mixed feeling. Thinks boarding school. It is both good and bad for him. Then he says, when? Then she turns, puts his, her, his mouth put into the hole and says, tomorrow, tomorrow. Then he puts his ear and says, by the time he could turn, Miss Peggy kisses him on his throat. My child, I'm with you. Don't you fear. You will have my care and affection always. Where, which, where, which boarding school? Tomorrow, somewhere close to London. Hearing that, as a little boy, he has a lot of mixed feelings and fear. Then after finishing, this is how, then he says, thank you. I'm always there for you, dear. Don't you fear. Dickens, Charles Dickens then says, I never thought a keyhole could be such a wonderful source of communication. It was on that day I realized, yes, keyhole can be a source of communication to anybody. That's how he writes, describes this event. And then after this, David is now put on to the school. He goes to London to study in Mr. Clark's school. It's called Salem House School. He goes there. It's a very bad shape. It's a huge building filled with boys who have no education, who have no manners, all local boys who's coming there. They come there and he doesn't like the school, but still he says, he has no other way to go. He still keeps in the school studying, finishing his lessons on time. And then as he studies, he doesn't like it in any way. When he has his winter holidays, he comes home. He comes home then, Mr. Mertzen and plans to send away David for two weeks to Yarmouth. It's a seacoast and a fishing town where Miss Peggotty's brother, Mr. Peggotty, his nephew, Ham, and also a little girl called little Emily. All of them stay there. He goes there for two weeks on a winter holidays, has fun looking at the beautiful town coast, fishing and doing a lot of things. And he lives in a house, in a boat house, which has been turned upright. It's the boat house, which has been turned upright. And that is the shed they have. So he lives in the house. He loves the smell of the fridge. He loves the smell of the sea coast. He loves it and says, this is the best time of my life. And he keeps enjoying. As he keeps enjoying, then he's called back to his back home, Mr. Murdstone and his mo mother, both are there. Then he sees, he realizes, Mr. Murdstone has married his mother. Then he realizes that is why he was sent away for two weeks and both of them get married. And now he could see his mother would not given permission even to meet Mr. David. He earned to stay with his mom, sit on her lap, talk to him with a lot of love and affection, but he was not allowed. And meanwhile, at the same time, Mr. Murdstone brings his sister, Miss Murdstone, Murdstone, who stays with both of them. And she is, she says, she's a devil. She's a, she's a devil. He hates him to the core. 
he hates him to the core and then oh my life is in shatter what do i do he still says i know i still have to keep myself happy on the first floor his dad had left him a few books and adventurous books few books a lot of books and he keeps reading and reading them again to keep his mind occupied to keep himself active to keep himself happy he keeps reading books again and again the same books and he enjoys it one fine day mr merchant says enough if you cannot do your lessons i'm going to put you under 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 work as a child labor you're going to work in a factory wherein they make cheap liquor he sends him to the factory and there mr david david is not happy at all he can see there are all kinds of thugs there in a liquor factory children coming from the local community children coming from the arak shops all this and then he doesn't like it but he says yes i will still have to stay there he is a 10 year old boy and forced to work for his bread he says you are going to provide for yourself i am just going to put you up in a lodge and you are going to provide for your bread and butter so he starts working he doesn't like it a 10 year old boy who is from a highly educated family who had all values in life but now put up in this dirty place he still doesn't like but still he keeps up his spirits and says it's just for some time i know i'll have to come out of all this and he's still there working in the liquor factory and, and that was owned by mr mudston so mr mudston again when this a short gap is brought home then in the meanwhile mr miss pegetti his nurse knows how this boy can be do wonders if given a little chance she encourages him gives him all love and affection drops a letter saying i am always with you and sends him a few shillings saying this will be useful for you for your future or maybe you can use it whenever you like it and he keeps all of them very carefully thinking yes this is a memory for me i will never forget the love and care and the warm of mr pigetty he keeps them all with her with him and then finally on one fine day he says enough i cannot take this any more let me go out from here let me run away i cannot take all this i don't need this kind of a life he says and then he finds out and once remembers mr pigetty told him your great aunt betsy totwood she lives in groveville so you will have to go there so he remembers he takes all the shillings in his hand whatever little he collected takes them all puts his bag on his shoulder and a overcoat a nice very costly overcoat which was gifted to him he wears all this and starts walking he takes as he goes he takes he takes a chariot and which drops him at this particular place and then meanwhile there's a boy who cheats him he robs all his shillings he takes away his overcoat he takes away his leather jacket he takes away his shoes everything is robbed and then he has nothing left so he knows he still has to go to meet his aunt bretsy totswood he keeps walking very shabby he would not have anything to eat then somehow he reaches clark the salem school and there in the night he sleeps on the mud he sleeps on the platform there and then he gets someone gives him a little bread he has a little bread for him and keeps walking 27 miles he walks the little boy and finally he reaches shower asks here and there asking where is miss betsy lives in trotswood house and finally he realizes it is a little far away from the town he walks a little away on the outskirts and then he sees betsy trotwood in the garden betsy trotwood sees him and says no boys allowed here please move out move out you cannot come into the house david waits there for some time she is still busy in the garden watering the plants he keeps waiting there sits there with his shabby clothes stone clothes with no shoe dirty feet sits then betsy looks at him what is it i have told you you have no place boys have no place in this house please move david very goes very close to the aunt to the fence and says aunt i am your nephew david David Copperfield. Betsy turns around and looks. David, is it you? Yes, Aunt. 
please take me in i've struggled a lot and he tells all his stories what happened how he was troubled what happened to his life and then but she's still doubtful she says is it okay if i could take him she thinks no i cannot then betsy also has a cousin of hers who lives with him mr wick mr wickfield mr wickfield tells it's okay please bring him in dust him he needs a hot bath and bring him inside so betsy trots would takes david inside gives him a hot shower gives him good food to eat gives him a pair of clean clothes and asks him to sleep on the sofa for the night he sleeps and then he says this was the best night i ever have done the best i, I slept like a log and the best night i ever experienced as a child he tries to recollect and he shows there is hope every time after struggle there is hope coming in for all of us and he says the next morning when he gets up his aunt gives him a good hair cut gives him a new pair of clothes and said you will be from now on called david copperfield torchwood you are going to stay with me and then she says i'll put you in a good school she sends him she said i'll put you to, in london a very good school that can give you the best of education david is very happy he says this is all i wanted a good school to study and a place to live in and he's so thankful to aunt betsy mr wakefield then says yes give him a place let him stay here we can also use him for something mr wakefield by profession is a man of letters he keeps writing letters to the court and to the authorities he that he drafts letters and then he asks david to keep drafting letters he keeps telling and he starts meanwhile he also learns shorthand david learns shorthand so that that would help him for his future he learns shorthand and keeps writing in the meanwhile he never forgets his aunt and his nurse miss pigetty so miss pigetty comes home here to see david they hug each other and i remember charles dickens here writes when he hugs when he had miss pigetty his jacket is so tight he hugs him tightly that one of the buttons jumps out and then he laughs says pegati is pegati your button your jacket button is out what does it mean miss pegati laughs and says yes my child i love you so much i just want to give you a tight hug and that's how it happened so both of them love each other meanwhile he knows now aunt tells him that his mother is expired his mother is no more and mother had a little boy both of them at the same time died both of them died died of ill health then david feels sad he cries cries and cries and cries the whole night couldn't he couldn't stop it miss miss pegotty comes and says that's okay there was nothing that you could do the gulf was big between you and your mother it's good now it's completely broken the gulf is nowhere now it's forever existing it's okay we can, you can relax this is life take it positively and then david copperfield yes thinks he has to go back and then he goes back to york mouth the fishing town where he meets all his old friends little emily is now a grown up girl she's uh, very Ra pretty we, we you need to finish it up in a, in a couple of minutes okay yes 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 now he meets his old girlfriend little emily he likes her a lot and he thinks how oh, how nice how could good it could be if she could be mine but meanwhile emily is in love with ham and she marries him then david thinks i have something in store and good for me so let me keep on that's how his childhood is and it is said he charles dickens literally spoke what he felt in his childhood in the book david copperfield and in the 1867 edition david copperfield david writes like many fond parents i have in my heart of heart a favorite child and his name is david copperfield which means it's him charles dickens himself he loves himself as a child and the childhood he faced in the childhood he enjoyed 
with everything, whatever little he had and he didn't have, he said, I enjoyed my childhood. Yes. Thank you. Thank you. Yes, this is the story and okay. the childhood of. Wonderfully done. Okay, everybody, if you like, uh, come back to gallery mode. And um, anybody, any feedback, any thoughts, comments, questions, feelings? Gustav, you've got to turn on your mic. Well, I'm completely astonished, uh, Rayel Lakshmi. It's been a wonderful, wonderful telling of a very long novel. And that is a thing that merely surprises me all the time. You're going to do that. And I have, um, it's very interesting. One of the things I'm going to do is to share this novel uh, with, with a very small local group to read it by chapters. And because I've found it beautiful novel, again, I love the Dickens, but maybe you should uh, maybe look the importance of women in this boy's lives, women that yeah. the effect, the effect these women have all through his life, and giving him the the the, the links and the moments they need he needed most the the, the affection of these women uh, through a keyhole. Imagine a keyhole, the the magic, the image of a keyhole is wonderful, but so 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 tiny but so potent. And then, um, well. Um, the importance of books also having books at hand and uh, mostly of all his res resilience you say resilience resilience yes. through his, yeah. through his, yeah. his really his life and going through boarding school and all the time through through time and uh, shall we call it luck i don't know if you could call it luck <laughs> but, uh, maybe maybe it's luck yeah yeah or, yeah yes maybe and that's the thing Another just, is perseverance. The perseverance to stay along and said, I'm going to fight it back. His courage to fight back. Yeah. Yeah, that's all. That's all. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. You know, a, a, a video camera on a computer for a video conference is also like a keyhole. Right? Do that little, <laughs> yes, you're right. Yeah. Do true. that little, yes. little thing we can see and be seen. Yes. Well, you know, I always uh, recommend that a storyteller be very clear on what the story is about. And okay. I think in this case, you were very clear. You know, it was the struggles of a young person. Uh, some people were helping him. Some people were a little mean to him. But he, uh, he persevered. And uh, finally, he had some good luck. So uh, I, it was. A, I, I felt it was a very satisfying storytelling. Thank you. Thanks, Eric. Mm -hmm. Anybody else want to add anything? Okay. Well, uh, uh, people. Some people are giving comments in the chat section, which you can you can also read. But uh, let's stop here and and move on. So I'm. Um,